Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new Unboxing Tomorrow adventure in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, covering one of my favorite topics of software-defined radio. I'm going to switch things up a bit today by letting you know that our monthly Patreon poll for July 2021 basically wants to know how comfortable you are in soldering, especially for integrated circuits. If you're not familiar or prefer not to, there is a solderless option in this poll, so let me know your opinion. I'm bringing it up early because this is going to influence whether future tutorials in the AVR series are going to favor solderless, through-hole, or surface-mounted parts, keeping in mind that the most advanced parts also tend to be the smallest. So as part of a new project in aircraft tracking ADS-B, I decided to purchase two new digital receivers, which were the smallest SDRs I could find. To recap, an SDR, or software-defined radio, is a multi-purpose device with the potential to work with pretty much any type of electronic communication. They've been in use in the industry for several decades, but they didn't really go mainstream in the makerspace until about a decade ago. This happened because of the Realtek SDR chipset, also called RTL-SDR, and while this device family isn't perfect, it is low cost and has the ability to go roughly from 30 MHz to 1.7 GHz, depending on the chipset. These differ from traditional hardware-based radio in that most of the signal processing and demodulation happens inside software running on a desktop computer. The details are outside the scope of this short video, but you can check out the video description for a direct link to my earlier video. I've mentioned the RTL-SDR chipset, but RTL-SDR can also refer to a set of free open source software that has this exact chipset in mind. Typically, the software version is expressed in lowercase, and among other things, it includes a program called RTL Test that can give you statistics on any RTL SDR chipset that's attached to your computer. This is usually a Linux application, so if you're in Windows or Mac, you're probably going to need to virtualize in order to try it out. The systems I'm testing this week are the Nuelec NESDR Nano 2 Plus and the Nano 3. And just for clarification, I'm not associated with Nuelec other than being a regular paying customer. For comparison, I have one of the earlier generic SDRs positioned on the left here, and you can see that the Nano series is a lot smaller, and they both trade the larger PAL connector for the smaller MCX series. Compared to the generic, all three have the same radio tuner and the same gain characteristics. By the way, if your computer driver supports one RTL SDR, it pretty much supports them all. Functionally, the Nano series has several advantages over the low-cost generic. First, the Nanos use temperature-compensated crystals, which keeps their frequency from drifting as they begin to self-heat. Secondly, the Nano series apparently ships with the receivers pre-programmed with a unique serial number. This means that you can easily plug in as many as you want, and your system will be able to tell them apart. If this weren't the case, you would be able to use the RTL EEPROM utility, but apparently this is pretty risky because if you do it wrong, it could render the radio receiver unusable. Third, the Nano series has protection from ESD strikes, and this is not always the case with the generic version. In fact, there are plenty of counterfeits that have no protection at all, and if you happen to touch the antenna port on the unprotected versions, your static electricity can literally destroy the radio without you noticing a thing. Finally, the Nano series, especially the Nano 3, is so small that even on devices like the Raspberry Pi, you can populate all four USB connectors with Nano 3s without them mashing together. Pretty impressive stuff. So if you want further detail on this radio series, and just to clarify, these are receive only, you can see my full write-up on the unboxing website, and I do plan to use both of these in future projects. And speaking of projects, these are made possible thanks to Patreon and my affiliates Satoshi Labs, maker of the Trezor cryptocurrency wallet, and TorGuard online privacy protection services. TorGuard VPN is the VPN service that I use to protect my online data, and you can see the link in the video description for information on their VPN services, private email, business VPN, and even physical VPN routers. Stay posted for the next project in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, and as always, have a great day.